I'm reading a sample wage overpayment underpayment agreement I saw on the Texas Workforce Commission website. This is the second video in a series where I examine sample employment forms and provide my advice and suggestions on how to best utilize those forms to protect your company. Today we will be reading a sample wage overpayment underpayment agreement. This information can be found for free on the Texas Workforce Commission website. This video is a part of a series where I examine these sample forms and I wanted to just say that anyone can use these forms, although it is on the Texas Workforce Commission. Here is my advice for anyone who lives outside of Texas who would like to create a similar form for their company. Number one, I would use the information in this video as a base, as a starting point. Then second, I would compare the laws in the state where your business resides and then I would insert that information. Finally, and I can't stress this enough, you need to consult with a licensed employment attorney in the area wherever your business resides. Let them review the documents and then I would go from there. This sample wage overpayment underpayment agreement is used in conjunction with the wage deduction authorization agreement I did a review of that sample document and I will put a link to that video right here. Let's get started. This bears repeating. I am reading a sample wage overpayment underpayment agreement and I found this on the Texas Workforce Commission website. Wage overpayment underpayment policy. This is general information about wage overpayments as noted in the article uh, the Texas Payday Law Basic Issues. The U.S. Department of Labor considers wage overpayments to be in the same category as wage advances or loans and thus find no minimum wage problems with deductions from future wages to recoup such overpayments. However, the Texas Payday Law requires such deductions to be authorized in writing by the employee in order to be valid. I will say that again. The Texas payday law requires such deductions to be authorized in writing by the employee in order for it to be valid. The best practice is to cover this idea in a written policy as illustrated by the example I'm going to read and as part of a wage deduction authorization agreement. This policy is of such importance that it should be separately signed by each employee in addition to the signed written wage deduction authorization agreement. Keep a copy of the signed version of the policy for each employee's personnel file. So again, as I spoke on the last video, these documents, you can create them all day long, but you must have a, a, a written policy that coincides with the document. You can't have one without the other. And in accordance with the Texas Workforce Commission, this is so important that this is a what, what I call a standalone policy. You write an employee handbook and you have a host of policies, a myriad of policies in the book. This particular policy, you're going to extract it from the handbook and make it into a document for the employee to sign. Now let's start reading the actual policy. The company takes all reasonable steps to ensure that employees receive the correct amount of pay in each paycheck and that employees are paid promptly on scheduled paydays. In the unlikely event that there is an error in the amount of pay, the employee should promptly bring the discrepancy to the attention of the general manager or payroll manager so that corrections can be made as quickly as possible. If the employee has been underpaid, 
The company will pay the employee the difference as soon as possible. If the employee has been paid in excess of what he or she has earned, the employee will need to return the overpayment to the company as soon as possible. No employee is entitled to retain any pay in excess of the amount he or she has earned according to the agreed upon rate of pay. If a wage overpayment occurs, the overpayment will be regarded as an advance of future wages payable and will be deducted in whole or in part from the next available paycheck or paychecks until the overpaid amount has been fully repaid. Each employee will be expected to sign a wage deduction authorization agreement authorizing such a deduction. I understand this policy and agree to its terms. I acknowledge that any wage overpayment constitutes an advance of future wages payable to me and I give permission to the company to deduct any wage overpayments. Choose one in full or in installments of X amount of dollars at a time from any subsequent paycheck to which I become entitled until the overpaid amount has been fully repaid. And then there is a signature for the employee and a date. I would also include a line for the employee's printed name where they can print their name. And I would sign off on that with my company uh, representative, have them sign and date the document as well. And underneath the signatures, it says, we ask that employees realize that pay errors are not intentional and that employees be understanding if such an event occurs. Now let's talk best practices as it relates to using this document. And as a business operations manager, this is information you want to know. I had a business operations manager tell me, hey, Nina, isn't this HR? If you are a business operations manager in a small business, this is your department. You are HR in addition to a lot of other hats. If you are a business operations manager at a larger company, you should at least be aware of what types of documents your employees should be signing and think of it this way. It's not a problem until it becomes a problem. So you as a business operations manager will be pulled into any issues as it relates to HR and you will be expected to resolve the issue uh, along with the rest of the team. When you use these types of documents, be sure to document the employee's pay from the time they start until the time they leave. Well, Nina, how do we do this? Well, you start out by using uh, some type of offer letter that indicates clearly in writing what the starting pay for that employee will be. Second, you make sure you have all of your payroll reports. And then thirdly, you make sure you document all payroll increases, raises, bonuses, any type of compensation so that you will be able to pinpoint when the payroll error happened. I was asked if there were statute of limitations as it relates to getting the money back from any type of uh, employee wage overpayment. Yes, there are, it varies by state, and I suggest you contact a licensed employment attorney to find out what the statute of limitations are in the area where your business resides. Don't try to pull out these documents when you see there is a problem. These are documents that you will have your new employee sign at the beginning at the start on their first day of employment. If I'm an employee and you make an error on my paycheck and you want me to, find, to, to sign something, I'm not doing it. So you have to think the longer the employee is there, 
the less likely it is that they are going to sign any type of document. So from the first employee on, this is where you want these types of documents signed and in the employee's file in case there is an issue. Don't be hungry to hire without performing your due diligence. Can you take back a wage overpayment without these types of documents? Legally, no. You must have these documents signed by the employee prior to doing any type of employee deduction. So please keep that in mind. A wage deduction from an employee's paycheck cannot be done legally without the employee's signature and knowledge that this is about to happen. It is imperative that your company does what it can to protect itself from these types of errors. This is an easy way to ensure that you can get back, recoup any type of wage deductions. And in doing my research on this, there is no state uh, that I'm aware of that you can deduct from an employee's wages without having any type of signature. Uh, with exception of uh, court orders. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you want to know more about business operations, business management, human resources, and other topics related to running a business, click on one of those playlinks. Click on one of these playlists. Click on the playlist. One eternity later. Click on one of these playlists. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe.